On this worksheet, we're gonna go through an acid-base titration calculation. There are a lot of different types of acid-base titration calculations. This particular one is going to involve a weak substance reacting with a str strong substance. So this would be an example of what you would use if you had a weak acid reacting with a, with a strong base, or vice versa if you had a weak base reacting with a strong acid. And then in this calculation, we're gonna be dealing with um, calculating the pH at some time not at the equivalence point. Uh, pH calculation at the equivalence point I covered in a different video. So this problem, uh, we have a volume and a molarity of a weak acid, and it is being titrated with a strong base. We know the actual volume this time and the molarity because it's not at the equivalence point. We, you know, we wouldn't be able to assume what the volume was. The volume has to be told to us. So you're gonna find that this problem is actually easier to solve than calculating at the equivalence point. We'll begin by writing the reaction between the acid here and the base, acetic acid CH3COOH, reacting with OH minus to form CH3COO minus and H2O. Um, just kind of as a reminder, the NaOH is dissociating or splitting apart to form Na plus and OH minus. So that's where this OH minus is coming from. This OH minus right here is coming from the NaOH. Uh, and then we're gonna make our ice table or we're gonna get set up to make the ice table. So the first thing that we have to do when we're filling in the I um, part, when we're filling in actually the whole entire ice table, this whole entire ice table is going to be done in moles, not in molarity. Um, we cannot do this ice table in units of molarities because the volume of these solutions are going to be changing. We've, we're starting with 245 milliliters of 1.5 molar acid, but then we're gonna add in another 120 milliliters of the base, which means the volume is going to change, which means that the concentration will change because the concentration is moles per liter. So if the, if the liters changes, then this whole number will change as well. So we can't just take these numbers that we have and drop them into the ice table. We have to actually figure out how many moles we have. That's the only thing that is not changing. We're going to calculate the initial moles of our acid and also the initial moles of our base and we'll do that using their molarities so for the CH3COOH we'll take its molarity 1.5 moles per 1 liter and then we'll multiply by its volume 245 milliliters or 0.245 liters 1.5 times 0.245 is 0.3675 moles that's how much we start with. And then for our OH minus, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use its molarity, which is 0 0.80 moles per liter, and we're gonna multiply by its volume. So its molarity right here and its volume, 120 milliliters, which is 0 0.120 liters. Um, that is 0 0.096 moles, 0 0.096 moles. They're not equal to each other because we're not at the equivalence point. Now, the next thing that we're looking at here, because our OH- is a strong base, this reaction goes to completion. We have to find the limiting reactant. That means we're going to compare our two reactants and we're going to pick the one that we have the least of. In this situation, it's the OH-, minus. that's the one that we have the least of, but honestly, it could be either one. So whichever one we have the least of, that's the limiting reactant, and we're going to use it as our change row. We are going to react all of the quantity of our limiting reactant. So once we know what the limiting reactant is, the thing that we have the least of, that's how much we're going to be reacting, and that's also how much we're going to be making, and I'm just not going to write anything for water because there's nothing going on over there. And then once we get that done, we'll fill in our E row by just doing the math in each one of these columns. 0.3675 minus 0 0.096 is two, not two, 0 0.2715. This is zero and this is 0 0.096. 
now we're going to calculate the molarity because we're getting ready to do our pH calculations. We're going to calculate the molarity of everything that is present in the E row. You're going to have uh, typically two things. So typically one of your reactants will have gone down to zero, but not the other. So you'll have some reactant left over and you'll also have some product. To calculate the molarity, we're going to divide each one of these things by the total combined volume. So for CH3COOH, its molarity will be 0.2715 moles divided by the total combined volume. That's going to be the total combined volumes. 245 plus 120 is 365 milliliters. 0.365 liters. So this molarity is 0.744. And then also in this ice table, we've got this guy right here, 0 .9, 0 0.096. So this is our OH minus. Nope, not our OH minus. That's our CH3COO minus. CH3COO minus, and it is 0 0.096 moles. It's in the same solution, so it has the same volume, 0 0.365 liters. 0 0.096 divided by 0 0.365 is 0 0.263 molar. That's its concentration. Now, what we do next depends on what we actually ended with at the end of this ice table. Let's take a look at the next page and follow the directions. So this is saying, do we have any strong base left over? Or also this could be, do we have any strong acid left over if we were doing this with a strong acid? If we do, if the answer is yes, we want to use the molarity of the strong base or the molarity of the strong acid to calculate the pH of the solution, and that's it. So let's go back and look at this. Our strong base was the OH minus. We ended with zero, which means we don't have any of it present, which means that we can't take the steps that were just described. But there could be a situation, perhaps, if this had been our limiting reactant, we would have ended up with some OH minus left over, and we would be using that to calculate the pH. We won't be doing that in this case, so this is not applicable to us. If you do not have any OH minus, move on to the next step. If you don't have any strong base left over, or it could be a strong acid if you're solving a different type of problem, then we're going to use the henderson hasselbach equation to calculate the pH of the solution. pH is pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. So first we have to get the pKa. The pKa is going to be the negative log of the Ka. pKa of this is 4.74, the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So we can plug that in. The pKa is 4.74. And we need the concentration of our base and our acid. The acid is the thing that has the most hydrogen atoms. This guy right here has four hydrogens. This guy over here has three hydrogens. The one with the most hydrogens is the acid. So let's go find our CH3COOH molarity. It is the 0.744, and oops, I'm putting that in the wrong spot. That's our acid molarity, 0.744, and our base molarity we calculated to be 0 0.263. So let's calculate this, 0.263 divided by 0.744, take the log of that and add 4.74, and we get a pH of 4.29.